There's, there's two types of uh, thought process you want. Um, you either want to be found or you don't want to be found with a bug out bag because let's say you're you're on foot traveling and there's bad guys a boot. You know, you, you may not want something bright orange. In, in other cases, if you're on your own, lost in the woods, you may want to be found. So there's there's two ways to go about that. Of course we have some dark. She has camouflage. But inside we also have uh, one of the reflective belts that you'll see on like safety equipment. And we also carry things for the kids as well. Um, the kids have little armbands we can put on them as well. Especially if you're you're traveling in a vehicle and um, you know uh, the good ones out of gas, you're walking on the side of the road, you want to be able to be seen. Now we also have, uh, for the boys, uh, glow sticks. And we have green for one kid, blue for the other. So if you're watching in dark and trying to keep track of people, you, you know which one's which as well. You know who to yell at. You know, where are you at? Um, also, um, you, there's, you can't prepare for every scenario. But what you could do is prepare for anything weak, your own weaknesses that you may have. Um, like uh, if, you, if, you, if you need medication or something, have extra medication available. Um, you know, I, I do have some survival skills where I can hunt and make snares and traps, so I won't have to have a lot of other tools to compensate for finding food or something. But you know, something that. You, you may have a weakness or you may not be able to prepare for it. And I always carry a bunch of knives as well. Now, uh, fire starters, and I have a lot of, I have a lot of uh, duplication in here as well. Um, so I'll have different fire starters throughout in case you end up losing something or depending how long you're going to think you're going to uh, be or if you we're not as something, and you bump into someone else, you can trade it back and forth. Um, I keep a lot of stuff in the original packages because if you need to make a fire, it's already in, you got fire there. Uh, even these little bubble wrap things, um, you turn them upright in the morning, they fill up with water from the dew and stuff. So, yeah, a lot of little survival tricks. Um, keep a little pad of paper in here as well. If you have to write down information, uh, take notes. What's really cool is this is this is a free sample of paper they give out to the soldiers. This is waterproof paper. Cool. Yeah, you can write in the morning. And I have a little thing here. And of course, the little things here. Cool. And anything, anywhere something will fit. Um, and this thing is still full of a lot of space now. One of the things that I'm really adamant about is Swiss Army knives. There are just so many tools on this. And again, redundancy. This is my favorite one. I think this one's called the Explorer. It's the one with the magnifying glass on there. Because you'll have all these fire starter tools and everything. But you know what? On a day like today, if I need to start a fire, magnifying glass will start a fire. Save your matches. Save your matches and you know. And um, again, you got this has scissors, screwdrivers, tools on there. All of these things. The quality pretty good on those? Very good. Yeah. Swiss so Army, yeah. Well, I used to leather them, and I think the quality is excellent. Like and this, this is something really, really silly and stupid, but it's this little thing they had at Christmas time. It's oh. one of those little compressed squash pods. And I, I go, every once in a while, I'll see it. It's like, you know, um, you know, in, in the bin, you know, 25 cents each, it's January, I'm like, okay, it's got film in it, but you need a wash bag. You know what, if, and you, you put it in water, and it absorbs water, but let's see if someone's bleeding, it'll soak with blood too, you know, just safety stuff. And you know, just always gotta be thinking. And it's also important to, to have everything where you know where it is, as well. And I uh, like the, the multi-pockets in these things as well. And uh, this is something, uh, from, I, I got a lot, a lot of military surplus and stuff. Um, this is one of those survival blankets, one of the shiny ones that that lock heat in. Um, and if it's really cold, you have a blanket. You can also line it with this 
But let's say, again, you're lost in the woods and you're, you need to get um, someone to find you. A big, shiny blanket you have to get found. Um, this is a poison ivy remedy. This is actually a free sample, and it's a remedy for poison ivy. Um, water filter. Again, I keep in the package. You know, people are like, let's tear everything open and tuck it away. You get the package. You got a lot of stuff in there already. Um, little mini tool kit. It's got screwdrivers and everything there. This was like a free gift. You bought something, they gave it to you. Uh, took, it had Neil Lowe's pliers and wire cutters in here. Um, took those out today when we went fishing. <laughs> um, these are some uh, past uniform patches if you get it. Your clothing tears. Um, this is it's, you peel its adhesive and you stick it on there. And, That's an interesting. Yeah. Um, combat gauze and uh, these bandage. Again, a lot of these were in military first aid kits and just pieces that were left over thrown in there. So all these I, I can get with that in here. Um, and this is something I was telling you about with the MREs. Um, when you when you have pants and you make cutoffs on them, obviously you've got the same pants, but these had drawstring ankles on the end. What we do is we sew up the part there, so now you have a drawstring pouch see. to That's store cool. the stuff in. I I kind of do that with the fleece pajama mm -hmm. pants for sugar gliders. Mm -hmm. Because you can cut strips like on the part where you sewed it and mm -hmm. tie it in knots and it closes that off too. And nothing uh, bungee cords. A lot of people are like, oh, paracord's great. You need paracord for everything. You have bungee cord. Um, like if, if you're going somewhere and you have a blanket, you roll up the blanket and just wrap it up in bungee cord and bungee it to that. Um, if you put up a shelter, you, know, you can tie strings here. You have a branch here and you got um, a tarp with grommets on the end. You just take bungee cord to each tree and you have yourself a shelter. Bungee cord is very useful. That's an interesting idea. And another thing, uh, you, there's, there is such thing as over prepping. Uh, if you've mm -hmm. got a bag that's too heavy, um, you know, it's, it's going to wear you out before, before you, you want. You, ha you have to measure it. Is it too light, too heavy? Um, what, what I do is, I, I have, there are some things I've packed in here that are only packed in here temporarily. Like when, when I'm in here, when I go on the move, I have a machete in here. I, I, I'll take that out and strap it to the side. Um, I have a long blade in here too. I think it's buried in, in the back there. Um, and then I take that out and put it on my belt. I've got two more MREs. Now, the thing is, if you're in a bug out situation where you have to go, um, I have, we have a shelf in our garage with our, our bags on there. So if we have to go, we pull them off the shelves, throw them in the back of the car, and, and we're moving. But what we also have is some of those cans of raviolis and everything. And in Right as we're going out, what well, I told the boys, the first thing you do is get something to eat. If you're bugging out and you bug out on an empty stomach, you're doing it wrong because you're going to start picking in your food right away. If, you, if you're bugging out, you leave on a full stomach, then you just bought yourself you know, an extra seven hours, an extra eight hours worth of food. Um, what I did to keep everything organized in here, because there are people, they'll, they'll have a bag, they'll store everything in the back, find it out. What I did is I have them sorted, I got these little shaving kits, and each one's a different color, just to sort things out. Uh, so I can, I have everything, each one has a purpose. Of course, I can figure out what it works. Yeah, Oh yeah, this is, this is my, this, uh, I'll put this on my belt right away. And this is, it's mean looking, but you know I'm thinking. Oh, it's, uh, not, it's, it's a yeah, exactly. It's a, a person or a hog or something like that. And you know, I got a heavy duty knife, and more than one knife is important because again, um, you can lose one. Yeah, or but this this one right here is use. is a skinning knife. Yeah. This one's a good hunting knife. That's a machete, and again, you could always end up trading. Uh, again, a redundancy. 
I got another magnesium fire starter in here. Um, and you saw the other one I had. Um, gloves. Uh, these these are pilot gloves or they're Nomex fire uh, resistant gloves. But again, if you're going through brush or something going through wood, you're gonna scratch up your hands and everything. You know, wear gloves. Um, I got um, this. Oh, this is like uh, a a strap to a camera case or something, which is which it was a nylon strap with a hook on each end, which is something that's useful, especially if you're 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 hooking two kids together, or you know you got you got a hook on here. Your bug out bag gets a little heavy. Just take it off. You can hang it on something. You know, these little things. It was kind of useful. Um, road maps. I have some place to go. Um, uh, this is really cool. This is uh, it's called a dump pouch, and this is something you just put on your belt right here. And what you do is, and this is something I actually had when I was you know, in the military in Iraq. It, it's a pouch. You open it up, and it folds out into a big pouch. But it, it's in the meantime, it's right here. But let's say you're in combat and you're in a firefight. And as you're changing magazines, actually it was on this side, um, you know, you drop a magazine, you, just, you pop that open, it turns into a pouch, you drop the empty magazines in there as you're playing with the new ones, you just have to throw really the empty magazines. But this is also very useful if you're going around foraging or something, or you're, you have to go somewhere and grab stuff, you, know, you have to just throw it somewhere, and this will go in a belt too. Um, now, you know, everyone, you know, who knows what P38 is? It's a little, little can opener. And every, you see all these survivalists like, oh, I got my P38. Yeah, P38, that's great because I have to open a can. You know what? If, if, you, if you go in a bug out situation and all you have is that stupid P38 to open a can of beans, you're an idiot. When you just go to Walmart for 98 cents and get a real can opener, and you're not sitting there twisting and, no, a real can opener. I keep it on the, on the cardboard because it's confirmed for that. Again, redundancy. I got it little strike any more matches and I keep a cotton ball on top to keep them from moving around and it's up a good lighter and the cotton ball is flammable mm -hmm. uh, I got another one little, this is another little reflective thing um, this is another strap used for the bag mm -hmm. um, plastic bags for dirty laundry and stuff mm -hmm. and this is, oh, this is a little scope, like a little spy scope. Ah, okay, there you go. Oh, that's interesting. And I think this was like free with a purchase or something. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little camera case. Of course, inside that, I got a little Altoids box. Inside the Altoids box, I've got alcohol wipes, little toothpick things here, super glue. And I've also got a little a little pocket knife, and this is just a little dinky steel knife that I use this with fire starters. So I'm not using my good knife. Yeah, I'm running your good knife. Exactly. Good I've got um, a super glue, so a little tube of super glue. Um, I've got nail clippers in here, and I got a clothes clothespin. And the reason that I have a clothespin in there. Is for no reason whatsoever other than there may be a need, something may come up where I need to close. Mm -hmm. You don't need a reason to have anything in there. I mean, yeah, think I about what you know. What, what you can bother for for, for, for for chips, fishing if you have to go fishing. Exactly. Fishing if you let's say you have to leave a note somewhere for something. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. I keep that in a little camera case, and I also keep a little lot of cash in there. A little bit some singles, and I think got some twenties in here too. Yeah, and a couple twenties. Okay, we know we, we know what's back to take. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah, but you know, always good to have some cash in a pinch like that. You know that mm -hmm. little tin that you got there, but it's all the rage. I've seen some of the guys on YouTube mm -hmm. put together some amazing stuff in those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. got these. Well, okay. now something else I haven't done yet, which I'm, I'm going to do, is I'm going to get some of that the paracord mm -hmm. and make little paracord leashes in here and tie them off to one of the straps inside so let's say something happens where I, I accidentally leave a bag open and things start dumping out all of a sudden I drag it oh okay so um another I'll try to let me see this here 
Um, another great little container. And this, this actually, this is something that would be so soapdishes. Cool. This one happens to contain a bar of soap. But when I was in Iraq, um, I had one of those little digital cameras, mm. and I used I, did, I couldn't find a camera case. I need a camera case, and um, I couldn't find one. I was at the little mini shop there. They had soap dishes, <laughs> so I used that as a camera case. I just wrap my I put my camera in a sock, put in, the, in this very camera case here, and I, I had it with me for a while. I kept it in my pouches, so but it took a lot of pictures. Finally, I get a camera case. Put the camera in the camera case. I drop it. Cracks the camera. I like back the soap dish, mm -hmm. and then using that for the rest of the time there. But it's also a great little thing to, for saving water and everything as well. Um, and you know, some little handy. Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, they're coming in handy today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm saying yeah. I was bleeding. This, this is something really, really cute that I was at like the dollar store, and they had little napkin things, and they were camouflage. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, I think you girls were gone by then, but at one point he, uh, he had a little scrape or something and yeah. without, without even bat an eye, Christian would oh, here, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He gave, he gave him a little antiseptic mm -hmm. thing that he was able to, you know, clean it up with. Um, I also keep a clean, brand new toothbrush in there. I mean, you don't want to have to run your bathroom find your old toothbrush. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, this, this whole container, I usually keep tongues and stuff in there. Uh, and I have, yeah, in each one of these bags, I think I have a fire starting kit. It matches there. Um, cookie paste. Two extra toothbrushes. Debit cards. Mm -hmm. What was and and stuff. Well, at least you remember something to do. And a little mini American flag. Why? Because I had one, but it, it's a morale thing. You know, every soldier has an you know, American flag on there, but a lot of them keep real ones tucked away and carry them everywhere. But again, it's, it's a morale thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to repack everything better later. <laughs> but this, is, this is kind of like my 23 thing here. You know, they're small. You know. This one, this one, first aid one here. Got a little mini first aid kit. Again, keeps it in a package number one. You know it's new, but it also tells you it has a list on back everything that's in it. And if you have to burn it, you can burn it. Uh, one of these little out what ones for head. This is moleskin. Uh, if you get a blister, you put this on the blister and it keeps it keeps you from rubbing and getting bothered. Another one survival blankets, because I usually don't travel alone. This is a military bandage, it's a sterile bandage. Um, if, if you get shot or something, you put it on there, you can tie it up and put pressure in there. Another thing, we have matches, hand warmers, um, hand sanitizing wipes, little thing here. Um, I've got, uh, what is it here? Uh, I've got Neosporin, of course, uh, and little, and some uh, chapstick stuff for your lips. Um, That's a good idea. And some hand lotion as well. Um, antibacterial bandages, uh, no chapstick compliments in the case of the USO. Mm -hmm. first thing get. And I also have a little, uh, it's, it's on my body armor back, at, but it, at, at uh, home it's a military first aid kit. It has a tourniquet and everything there for a little bit more trauma. And this one, I think, is a hunting bag here. Oh, no, no, this is, uh, this is just about everything else. I've got a little fishing kit in here. And this came, actually, this is the kit that came with the boys fishing poles. They got them Spider-Man, Batman. Yeah. And it came with little bags that were steel bags. Uh, it had a couple bobbers, fishing line, and, um, uh, Sinkers, uh, yeah, everything there, but they were sealed already. Nice. So, just had to. Uh, this is really cool. This is rope, but this is glow in the dark rope. <laughs> well, at least you can see where you're going. Exactly. Or if you don't we're, trip over it, you don't trip over it at night. Uh, if I have, if we're walking in a single file line, you just tie it over a belt loop 
and each person. We can call and each other. They'll lose anyone along the way. But of course, if you if you don't get tactical, you know, a regular line there, a couple of tent stakes. Uh, Vampire hunter, you don't like it. Don't like my idea. Slingshot. Okay. The boys uh, have this little slingshot that holds up. Fishing line here. This is really cool. This is, well, uh, I can open it, but it's a saw. It's a oh, chainsaw. Well, thing. Yeah. It's got down trees and branches. The zip ties. This is more fire starters here. Clint style. <laughs> Pair of scissors. This is one of those heavy duty scissor type. Um, another you know, matches. And when uh, for part for, for starting fires, um, you know how you have to take you know do the sticks and everything, and you're rubbing sticks together. Um, the, one of the toughest things, and this is having experience trying to start a fire, where are you going to find a perfectly straight stick mm -hmm. to this? Because if you don't get it, it's like all over the place. Um, I found the answer. Oh, it's just got little chopsticks. That's a good idea. And these little chopsticks are handy for anything. Uh, also, eating. If you know how to use them. But uh, yeah, it's just these are great little fire starting sticks. Uh, also, you have little pieces of wood there. You can break them up and use them to start a fire as well. Keep the burning. Yeah. And it was right there at the time. And zip ties as well. Oh, yeah. You always find these for something. <laughs> and, and and the thing is, it's, um, there'll be situations like, if only I had, wait a minute. And, yeah. and, and that, that, that's happened a lot, you know. It's, it's yeah. funny because um, I, I'm the same way at work. Um, I have this uh, little, it's almost like a briefcase, but it's, you open it up and it's all got little compartments in there. and. When I move, up, when I travel around, um, going to different schools and stuff, you know, you always need pencils, staplers, hole punchers, things like that. And it's just, it's, it's like a desk drawer full of stuff, but I can take and carry it with me. And so it's like, oh, well, you know, I need staples. Hold on, yeah. and I got batteries in there. Well, and the other thing is, I have, I keep batteries, um, but you got to keep rotating those, so I have a box of batteries there. And go through that. And that, that's mostly it. Some other things I got in here, um, a big tarp. Excellent. These, these were really like two dollars uh, for this. But with the bungee cords, you can make a little shelter <laughs> with them. And of course, a aluminum water container. And the boys have theirs as well. Um, another thing um, with the kids, and this is this is something I actually have yet to do, but with their um, their bug out bags, uh, I have theirs all set up. Um, I have them in, you know, I have their clothes picked out for them as well, and they each have a little army hat that they wear, and it's one of those floppy army hats, and I keep that in there. And, I, and I, you know, I tell them, you know, about a situation, you wear that as well. Um, I'm gonna, um, and I still have to do this but take photographs of them in wearing those clothes. So if there's a bug up situation and we get separated and I'm looking for my son wearing a blue shirt and a floppy hat and I'm going around, have you seen this kid? A lot of people may not register facial features, but they'll remember a kid in a blue shirt with a floppy hat. So you have the picture of the kid wearing the little backpack on, maybe with that little armband on and that floppy hat, have you seen this little kid wearing that? And uh, we get those pictures, one kid on each side, laminated, and one in my wife's bag, one in my bag. And in addition to that, I'll get pictures of me and my wife and put them in the kid's bag. I can't find my mommy and daddy there. Mm -hmm. like and just so, so you know. Question. Just a thought. Um, on the back of the kid's picture, put your full name and your wife's mm -hmm. full name too, or num n any numbers, yeah. relative? Yeah, um, you, you may not want that on the actual picture, Again, because the bad guy gets a hold of this, he'll know what the kid looks like and where they oh, live. Okay. But you definitely want addresses and stuff, identifying information. Mm -hmm. Kids also, uh, I, I give them little dog tags, but we're going to get custom made ones as well. 
with their information on it. That's a good um, idea. Again, if they get separated, uh, or if you know, God forbid, they get lost in the woods, um, you know, they'll they'll know what to do if they go somewhere. It puts your name or for well, I know, like in Katrina, kids got separated from the parents, exactly. and then you know, you ask the kid, "What's your mom's and dad's name?" Ah, mm -hmm. You know. But yeah, just you know, uh, preparation is the key. Yeah, yeah. Well, everything. Uh, what's also cool about this bag is it's got a, it's got a zipper on it, so it actually expands more. And it probably could have gone crazy and put a lot more stuff in it, but you know, this is enough for me to carry without killing myself. Right. Well, I mean, but um, yeah, and you just you just have a system. Uh, expect you know the worst trying to prepare for any contingency. You, there's and the funny thing is, um, if there's ever a situation where I need to use this, I probably won't have something that I need. Sure. But I'll have something I can trade for, I'll have something that's useful. Uh, another thing, I think there's a road atlas as well. Ah, um, good idea. And another, uh, there's some other useful things. Um, a paperback book, like a dictionary of some sort, um, because if you're starting a fire, you got pages you can use. Um, and they're uh, just an old, crappy book you don't need anymore. Or, you know, something that you want to read anyway. But, uh, you know, so dual use is the key. If you got something that can be used for more than one thing, then that's a few things less that you'll, you'll need to carry with you. I would pack some Sudoku books and stuff to keep yourself Yeah, so yeah keep, keep your mind working. Uh, for the kids, you know, definitely want them to keep their minds working um, as well. And, and of course, my mind would be working trying to keep the kids all together, but, um, you know, something to keep them occupied. And then, and there are other things that you want to keep in there, a compass and, you know, something useful for mm -hmm. land navigation. Um, but um, uh, there's a couple other things I got. Uh, safety pins are really useful. Uh, straight pins because yeah, I mean I have a compass, but I can make a compass if I have a straight pin and a magnet, and you know just a little bit of water. Take the straight pin, stick it on. You, you've probably done this before. Scrape it on the magnet, stick it on a little piece of bark, drop it in water, and it's now magnetized needle, and it'll automatically point north. So you can do that. You know, there's um, that's an interesting. You know, I forgot and, about. And of course, you know, again, uh, know a lot about your surroundings. Do land navigation by looking at the stars. Um, you know, when we're driving here, tell the boys, okay, how do we know which direction we're going? We're heading west. How do you know? The sun's going down in the west. And so he's going down in the west. If that's west, and that's north, that's south. You know the direction you're going in. To you know where you gotta go. But again, you know, I, the one thing I'll probably end up needing is a phone charger. <laughs> Stop the phone charger. But you know, again, it, it's useful. It, in the back of a car, you know, it's you know, going on a long trip. Something happens. Um, the, the worst case scenario, you your car breaks down. You're stuck on the side of the road for eight extra hours. You know, Dad, I'm hungry. Okay, I got some Reese's cases in here and some food to go on or something like that. You know, they can play with fire. <laughs> uh, a couple other things that you definitely want to keep in there: clean underwear, clean socks. Um, and again, you want to, you want to think of a situation where you may be walking for a long time. You want to take your, your walking socks, your socks get wet, they get hot, and you get blisters more from what damp socks than you do from dry socks. So after a while, you're, you're walking. You stop, you take those socks off, you hang them off your backpack, put dry ones on, but those are drying, those are sweating. Um, let's see, uh, again, extra clothes in there. Um, uh, flip flops. Let's say you stop for a while, or we got camp, you know, you're going to camp. Uh, you don't want to air out your feet. The most important things you, you got to use are your feet. My flip flops aren't in there because they're over here because I'm um, yeah, you, you put those in there, you stop the camp for the night, you're going to be walking around on twigs and stuff, but you want your feet to get some air to dry out as well, um, and you won't be able to wash them, but you won't be able to walk around and let your shoes air out as well. Um, 
And if you have like water bottles, you keep your water bottles because you can refill them. Leave your bottles and fill them. Carry them with you. I know it's sugar to look back at me when I said about stupid shoes, but he said flip flops as a temporary until you understand. Then they crash and say, yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe still. Now you said yeah. your wife has more medical. My, my, um, my wife, she's got, um, I, I've got a little medical kit with, you know, forceps, scissors, scalpel, sutures, things like that. Um, yeah, and uh, actually I forgot a lot of stuff. She, she's got like IV tubing and needles and stuff. No IVs, no, no go bags of water or anything. But I don't know, if she had to do a blood transfusion, she probably could. You know, and again, she's got the training for it. She's she's you know, a nurse. She she's a LD and she's going for her arm right now. So I trust her. I see too many people on YouTube talking about having a surgery kit and all this stuff. If you're not qualified mm -hmm. to be using that stuff, you can kill somebody. I mean, I can see maybe someone in your group or someone who's a mm -hmm. happens upon that incident has those skills, but I don't know. A lot of people they push that and. Mm -hmm. And, and if you have those skills, I think it's a great idea, but, and, but oh, and I hate to, you know, feel overconfident and yeah, let me stitch that up for you, you know, and end up nicking somebody's artery or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, you know, you could always make a bad situation worse, but I don't know what you're doing. Um, something else, um, and we were talking about this, and, and you're always thinking things to add, and you almost want to make a list, because there are several things on my list that we got to to put together. But guys always talk about ammunition, you know, carry ammunition. But what ammunition do you carry? Well, if I'm going out the door, I'm grabbing two things. I'm grabbing my 9mm and my AR-15 for many reasons, mainly because I'm in the military. So if I wind up somewhere with the military and I'm like, hey, I need some more ammo, and what did you bring with you? I brought my 40 and my 308. Sorry, we only have 5.56, and 9 mil. So. Um, however, that doesn't mean limit yourself to carrying that ammo, um, because um, five by twenty two gives that way. I yeah. keep twirling. No. But there's, yeah. there's a thing about the AR fifteen. You can just get a replacement bolt and a replacement magazine that fires twenty two. You can fire it from your AR fifteen. Ah. Because the AR fifteen is a two two three, and the twenty two is a is decimal two two three. And 22 is decimal 22, so there is only a 0 .003 difference in the diameter of the barrel. So you can shoot 22 rounds through a 223 barrel. Not going to be as accurate, of course, because the rifle is uh, different. But you just replace the bolt that's capable of firing those. And you guys, instead of carrying two rifles, you have one rifle that fires two different rounds. Um, huh. But um, I was talking to some other guys, and like one thing you can do in your bucket up bag is just have five rounds of just about 45, 40, 22, 223, 308, um, of all, all, all the different ones, you know, 12 gauge, you know, 20 gauge, mm -hmm. and you should just keep it in the bag because let's say you run out of ammo, but hey, you're moving along and you somehow find a gun that's a 40 and it's out of ammunition. Or you find a guy, you bump into a guy, and he's you know, got a 40, and all this food. Mm -hmm. so, I'll trade you some bullets for that food. Oh, heck yeah, you know, because you know he'll probably be desperate for bullets. So bullets are worth money. Yeah. I can carry around a brick of gold, or I can carry around a bunch of ammunition. Yeah. You know, in a worst case scenario, that ammo can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's everything. That's my treasure. Awesome. Awesome, girl.